In the previous video, we gathered together all the parameters we need for calculating our costs and revenue. Now we're going to put them all together and calculate our net present value. Okay, so I've changed a few things since you were last here. First of all, I set up the timeline, so now all we have to do is fill in the blanks. Then add them together to calculate our total revenue, our total costs. Take the difference to get the net benefits. Then discount to find the discounted net benefits. And then add them all together to get the net present value. Then after that, we're going to calculate the internal rate of return and the payback. Oh, and I made it really pretty, because that's how I roll. The second thing I did was add labels to all the parameters. So when we refer to them in the equations, we know what we're working with. Also, it sets it so that when we refer to that cell, and then copy and paste an equation, it's not going to try to get the variable from the next cell. So here, if we give it a name, and then refer to it in an equation, it uses the name. And if we copy and paste the equation, it's going to automatically use the position of that cell, rather than try to refer to a relative position. It's the same effect as if we had added the number sign in front of each of the row and column cell locations. It's doing the same thing. OK, so let's get started. Let's start with the easiest ones first. We'll do all the fixed costs and fixed benefits. So construction costs happen in year 0. Startup costs happen in year 1. We're buying new equipment when we open, and then again in year 7 and again in year 12. We have to pay the annual rent on land the whole time. We have to pay insurance the whole time. We have to pay property tax the whole time. And then for wages and salaries, we start paying that when we open and then till the end of the project. Our last fixed number is just the residual value. So we set up an equation multiplying our residual value percent by our construction costs. There, that's all of our fixed values. Now let's move on to the costs and benefits that depend on how many guests we have. To calculate our revenue from visits, we need to multiply the number of times a guest is charged for a day by the price of a day. So for year two, we're going to have 3,942 people and it's going to cost $200 a day. Then for years 3 through 4, it's going to be the same number of people, but our price has increased. For years 5 through 9, we use 4,088 guests and multiply by $368 per guest. And then for the last 7 years, we use the 4,307 visits and $423 a visit. And there, our revenue calculation is all done. So now we basically just have to do the exact same thing, but for all of our variable costs. Except this time our variable costs are not changing over time, so we just have to make sure we get the year right. All these costs happen when we open in year two. I think this next part is straightforward enough. I'm just going to leave you with it. I'm going to go get a bagel, but uh, here's some music.
Cool. Now to find the total revenue, all we need to do is take a sum of the year's revenue. And we can copy and paste that across. Then again for all the year's costs. To find the net benefits, we take the total revenue and subtract the total costs. And we can copy and paste that across. Now to discount, we use the discounting equation, which is the revenue minus the costs, or just the net benefits, divided by 1 plus the discount rate to the power of the year. To get the net present value, all we do is add them all together. And there, our net present value is positive, which means it's viable at our current discount rate. So yay! Now let's gather our cumulative net present value to find the payback period. For the first year, we just take the present value for the first year. And then for the next years, we set up an equation where we're taking the previous year's present value and adding this year's present value. And as we paste this across, we get the year-by-year -year accumulation of the present values. And there, it looks like our project will pay back just before the beginning of year 12. And a good way to see if we did that right is to see if the present values in the last cell is the same as our net present value. Whether we add them all up at the same time or from cell to cell, we should get the same number. And last thing we're going to do is calculate the internal rate of return. So Excel has this as a built-in function. In the function library, it's under financial and then IRR. And then we set it to the net benefits, not the discounted net benefits. So basically, you're telling it what the net benefits are for each year. It's going to set the net present value to zero and then solve for this discount rate. And there. Okay, so it says zero, but that's wrong. I have all these cells set so that they round to the nearest zero. So we need to go to home, go to number, and set it to percent. I ran into this problem because I was trying to make everything pretty. If you're just using the normal cell, you're not going to have this problem. So since our net present value was greater than zero, we should expect our internal rate of return to be greater than our discount rate. And it is. So we probably did it right. And okay, looks like we're all done here. In the next video, we're going to do this exact same thing, but for an economic analysis.